That was a clinic in defense of hockey by the Carolina Hurricanes and Rod Brindamore. Wow, if you are a fan of the little things in hockey, you're going to love that game. If you're a Carolina Hurricanes fan, you're going to love that game. If you are anybody else in hockey, Rangers fan or casual fan, you're sitting at that going, what did I just watch? What a neutral zone clog up the middle snooze fest. However, however, it was an incredibly tactical game. So we're going to do what we have to do, and we're going to break this one down. Coach Ryan Dees put on the tracky for this one. Time to figure out why the Carolina Hurricanes at home are impossible to beat, and their team defense is just so darn punishing against other teams, especially those from the Northeastern United States. Let's talk about it. So in this game, we know we have a few truths. The first truth is that you have two of the best defensive teams in hockey squaring off right now. The Carolina Hurricanes are number one. Boston was arguably number one as well, but Carolina is what came out on top. They're all that's left. And New York is in the top five. So you have two very defensively minded teams. And no, New York isn't in the top five just because of Igor Shosturkin. They're in the top five because the way their team defense works. And team defense is the unit of six that's on the ice, including the goalie. Now, when you are playing team defense, there are certain concepts that you need to watch for when you're watching this game that can evade you, especially when you're puck watching as a fan. We all do it. Players do it. Everybody does it. You see me point it out in the channel all the time. Look, he's watching a puck and he's watching a puck. On team defense, it's about not watching the puck. It's about watching what is going on around you, holding your space and holding your zone. We call this contain. There's two real key attributes to playing great team defense. Number one, you got to know when to contain and when to pressure. You contain when the other team has the puck. Now, we have to go backwards a little bit. When you're on defense, we have to make this clear. I always forget that people can be new to this game. Defense doesn't mean the defensive zone, kiddies. Defense means when your team doesn't have the puck. So there's three scenarios in hockey we coach. When you don't have the puck, you're on defense. When you do have the puck, you're on offense. And when neither team has the puck, puck is in dispute. We are only talking about right now when your team doesn't have the puck and you're on defense. This can be in the offensive zone, neutral zone, or your defensive zone. It doesn't matter where it is on the ice. We're not talking about zones. We're talking about puck possession. So when the other team has the puck, you're on defense and you want to contain. When you can see their chest and you can see their eyes, you're looking to contain, keep them to the outside. Certain tactics that we use with this are as follows. We want to keep players outside the dots. So that means we want to go ahead and defend all this area that's inside the dots, regardless of where we're at on the ice. And that's what the Carolina Hurricanes are doing better than anybody else. They're keeping the New York Rangers on the outside. There's no damage that can be done to you on the outside. So the first thing you want to do when you're containing is defend the dots in all ends of the ice. The second thing you want to do when you're containing is hold the lines and you want to force a dump and chase game. So there's two lines that you need to hold. The last line you want to hold is the line I just highlighted here, which is your own blue line. That's actually your second priority. Your first priority is the red line. So this is one, this is two. If this is the Carolina Hurricanes defensive zone, what you want to do in the neutral zone when you're playing defense is you want to force dump ins. Why? Dump ins turn over puck possession. And when you turn over puck possession, you now go from defense to puck in dispute. And that totally changes the form of the game. If you're on offense, puck possession is the name of the game. It's king. It's what you want to do. What Carolina is doing is a very effective what we call one, two, two neutral zone trap. Now, they don't use the term neutral zone trap anymore other than insulting people, but it's never gone away. So what the principle of that is, is that you're looking at a puck over here somewhere on the wall. It doesn't matter if it's puck carrier, it can be whatever you want. Then you have your first four checker. We call them F1. What you want to do is you want to have your F2 and you want to have your F3 and they actually want to cut off half of the ice. Then you want to go ahead and you want to have your D1 here and your D2 here. So you got your five Carolina Hurricanes players. The first thing you want to see is F1, corral the puck to the side and force that puck up the wall. You saw this over and over and over again in this game. Once you force that puck up the wall, what you end up seeing is F2 push towards the wall, F3 push towards the wall, and you start sandwiching them off 
before this red line. The whole idea is to force them before the red line. So anywhere in this area here, that way, one of two things will happen. There will be a turnover and a Carolina Hurricanes defender can actually jump in, pick up the puck and you're on a rush. You're on offense. That's the first thing that can happen with a one, two, two. The second thing that happens is they end up dumping it in. And it's usually a bad dump in. Remember, we got a goalie back here. Ronson knows what he's doing. He goes out, plays the puck in the trapezoid, and they're able to exit their zone, gaining possession. Either way, whether they dump it in or the defender is able to step up, you as Carolina now have puck possession. The second thing you want to do is if they end up penetrating the red line here and you don't have the opportunity to effectively go with your 1-2-2 two, two in the neutral zone, then what you want to do is you actually want to stack your defenders across the line like this. Two defensemen just barely in the line. Then you want to have your F3 here holding the blue line. You want to have your F1 on some kind of back check or backtracking forcing them over to a wall, and then you actually want to go ahead and have F2 here pinching them off as well, and you want to force them to be able to dump it in at the blue line, taking away any opportunity to make a cross-ice pass. You do not want to let the Rangers make a cross-ice pass here. And that's it. That's the story of the game. Two simple systems. That's all Carolina did. They pinched them off at the red line. They forced them to dump it in at the blue line and dump ins, dump ins, dump ins. That allows you to use your goaltender, turn pucks over, go the other way and go on offense. That's what we mean when we're talking about contain. Now, when we talk about pressure, as soon as you're in that containing formation and you see them make a spin move or a delay or show you their back, then you're going to pressure and you're not just going to send one. You're always going to send two. We talk about puck support on this channel all the time, turning it into two-on-ones. The first guy is going to make a hit, a body check, or attack the puck with what we call stick on puck. That means the stick is checking the puck. It's a stick check. It's just a cool hockey term. The second one is what we call puck support. So if we go back to our board, what does that look like? If you have the puck carrier right here, let's say, you're going to go ahead and you're going to have your F1 right here. That's your pressure guy. He's going to be either laying bod or stick check. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to have F2. He's only going to be one stick length away from F1 and he's going to be on the right side of the puck. The right side of the puck means if this is your defending net, you want to be between the puck and your goalie. So once that puck is hit and you engage in a one-on-one -on -one battle, you pick it up and you gonzo. Now you might be sitting there thinking that seems way too easy. It is and it isn't. On one half, the offenses these days are so creative, so dynamic, and so good that the defense can end up getting out of position quite easily, especially when the zone gets widened or lengthened. So the offense wants to play using the entire ice where the defense wants to go ahead and cut you up into little zones. Carolina won this game because they cut up the New York Rangers into little zones all over the ice and the Rangers had no answer. There's two ways you can go ahead and you can beat that. And I'm going to tell you what they are, but first, I want to thank everybody for being here. Ask you to give Coach Ryan D a quick thumbs up. Like this video. Help spread the love. We've been growing like gangbusters. Subscribe if you're new to this channel. Maybe you've seen a couple of my videos. You've been hanging around, checking it out, thinking about it. Subscribe's free. Just hit subscribe. Join us. It's great. And also, come hang out with us in Discord. We're having a blast. We have 180 hockey fans raving fans, lunatics, love them all. They are all in Discord right now. They're talking about the Rangers, talking about the Canes, they're talking about the Oilers, they're talking about the Flames. We got fans from every team. It's a pretty good environment. We want you to be there. I'm in there as well too. And if you want to support the channel, you can always support the channel through becoming a channel member, which is a monthly subscription fee and you get bonuses and perks for that. See down below by hitting the join button and you can join these beauties here on screen by getting shout outs. You get more attention from Coach Ryan D if you require it. And heck, I can even make a video for you. Also, if you want to go ahead and donate one time, we've got a super thanks down below. I got to give a real big shout out to Ash. He ended up giving us a super thanks. He was in the Discord and said, hey, coach, we like what you're doing. I really appreciate that, guys. All right, hold, hold the phone. Ash. Really? Thanks, man. Like, wow. That's the first time I'm seeing this. I was just saying, honestly, true story. I was like, I... Ash said, how is he going to donate? I was like, hey, man, you're the best. I just went to crop it out to give him a shout out as I'm editing this video right now. And I saw that and was like, damn, I really appreciate that you like the content that much. So, buddy, big high fives. I'd send you an electronic beer if that was a thing. Thanks for being here, man. 
There's never any pressure. I just want to hang out with you guys for free. So join the discard, hit like, hit subscribe. It's all the ways you can support this channel. The other stuff, it's just a bonus. Thanks for being here, Hot Garbage Sports Nation, and thanks for being here, members of the coach's staff. All right, so how do you beat it if you're the New York Rangers? It's really simple. When you're getting pinched off at this area of the wall, instead of pressing forward, what you need to do is realize you have a defenseman behind you and you need to hinge it back to your defenseman. Your defenseman is going to have a D partner over here. They're going to go D to D and then you need to widen the zone through what we call a neutral zone regroup. By doing that, the defenseman that ends up carrying the puck, your D2, they're either going to activate and pressure forward carrying the puck or they're going to make a little breakout pass to your player. So you got to actually go backwards in order to go forwards. And that's, you know, not programmed into hockey players into the NHL. It's always about north to south. The second way to do it, and it's the more fun way to do it, is dump the puck in cross ice. Don't let the goalie pick it up. When we're talking about dump ins, we have the hard rim that can go around the net. Goalie's got a great chance to stop it. We talk about a soft dump in where you go ahead and try to leave it in one corner so a goalie can't do it. But there's also a cross ice dump in. This is my favorite because it's just going to bounce off the boards and come out. It also forces all the defenders who are on one side of the ice trying to pinch you off to have to start widening and cutting across the ice. What is that going to let you do when you're dumping the puck in the zone? Because I said dumping the puck isn't ideal. It's going to let you win the race to the puck or blow them the f up. And the New York Rangers today, my goodness, for a team so big and so heavy, why are you not hitting the Carolina Hurricanes? The Hurricanes are tiny compared to you. Yes, they're tough. Every player is tough, but you need to lay body. If they would have been investing in hits in these two games, it would have paid off dividends by the time because when you start hearing footsteps in the back of your head when you're going to pick up every puck those hits add up and they hurt over time you need to commit to teams laying body the rangers hit them 20 times this game the carolina hurricanes had more puck possession than the new york rangers and they laid almost two times as many hits and they're the small guys that's not the way it's supposed to work. If you have the puck on your stick, you're supposed to be taking the hits, not giving them. So the Canes brutalize them all over the ice. They beat them in the hit department. They beat them in the face-off department. They beat them in the shots department. They beat them in team defense. They just beat them. And if you're getting beat, beat them. Literally and physically, that is what is going to work. You heard me talk on my last video about the fact that the Carolina Panthers were throwing too much bod. That's because the middle of the ice is open for them. That's because they can play five on five and hold puck possession. The New York Rangers in this game got it taken away by the Canes. So beat them up. Beating them up breaks the system down. And as the system breaks down, you're going to find a lot more room out there. The whole game is about creating time and space for yourself. Body checking creates time and space if done appropriately and properly during the right periods of time. And this would have been a game to invest in that. And even if you lose this game, no big deal because it carries over to next game. Now, I do think when this series switches, because Carolina is monsters at home, why? Brindamore is an amazing coach. You have two Jack Adams award winners here. You got Brindamore, you got Gallant. Both are very good. Brindamore is out coaching him right now, but he has the home ice advantage, which favors the coach. Brindamore also has the advantage of the best third line in hockey in terms of shutting down. The Jordan Stahl, Nino Nita Ryder, and Jesper Fast line, they just take guys out. They take out elite players. So no matter whether they get matched up against the Zibanejad line or the Panarin line, they're not scoring when those guys are out there. When this series flips back to New York, what Glant needs to do is stop shuffling these lines like crazy. He's not getting any chemistry. Just stop it. Enough. Load a line. Load a singular line like the perfection line was loaded with Boston. Go ahead, put that line out, and make sure you match it against Carolina's second line or first line even. The Aho line, not that strong defensively compared to line two and line three. I'm not sure why, but the Pasternak, Bergeron, and Marshawn line, they feasted on them. They feasted on the Ajo line, and I think he's a really good two-way center. So if I'm Gallant, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the Zibanejad line and make sure they match up against the Ajo line, and I'm not going to allow that Jordan Stahl line to go ahead and take me out. The other thing is, is that the Strom line won't match up against the Stahl line either. So the only way that Brendamore can get the stall line out against the top two lines is if he runs the stall line and gives them the most amount of ice time on the team, just increasing the probability that the one and two line won't end up coming out. But the challenge with that for Brendamore is, is that his third line is now giving the most amount of ice time. That's not good either. You need your horses to run too. So 
Unfortunately, Brenda Moore hasn't been able to figure it out yet on the road in the playoffs. I know it's only been three games. It'll be very interesting to see. But I think next game, the Rangers are going to flip it around. I think Gallant and the scoring for the Rangers is going to show up next game because Carolina is dominant at home. They're dominant at home thanks to line matching. And defensively, they took him to school this game. Gallant got out coached. He should have changed his team to reversing it the other way. He should have told his team to start laying some bod. All right, let's take a look at some nuances here. Carolina goes to turn the puck over. This is what you're going to see about the two versus one at all areas of the ice. So Carolina doesn't get that turnover, but look right away what Sebastian Ajo is able to do. He was on the wrong side of the puck, and that's because his teammate had the puck. He was moving it up the ice. But as soon as he sees his teammate is in trouble, Ajo makes two or three strides down this way, and he's starting to angle his player out to the boards. You always are going to play against two Carolina Hurricanes when you are one New York Ranger. Ajo gets on the right side of the puck there immediately, and he is able to make a play. This is how good and dedicated defensively they are. Most superstar players here, to be honest, they wouldn't have come back like Ajo did. They would have kept pressing forward. They would have gotten caught. Not Ajo. He's coached by Brenda Moore the right way. He goes the right way. Unfortunately, he overskates the puck. It's a little bit of a puck fumble. It happens, but he was on the right side of the puck. He made the right play. And because he's on the right side of the puck, you can see he has an opportunity to recover. He's in a little bit of a fumbling stance. I mean, you can see this is this is a bit of trouble, but it's better to be in trouble on that side of the puck than it is on the other side of the puck. So that's what we mean by the right side of the puck. New York is then able to carry it to the corner, but you can see again, because he's on the correct side of the puck, he recovers and he's in good defensive side positioning in order to make a check. Now, when that puck ends up moving forward to the middle of the bread man, we picked on Florida for this all day, every day yesterday. And what you end up seeing here is just look at the smothering defense of the Carolina Hurricanes. There is not going to be an opportunity here for Panarin to really get lots going on the ice here. So every time that puck moves from one player to another, it's a two versus one. Panarin goes ahead, makes a beautiful dangle. I mean, D'Angelo's an okay defenseman compared to Panarin's offense. D'Angelo's good, but I mean, he's no slaven when it comes to stopping it or shutting down guys. He's more offensive. Panarin actually ends up putting it wide. He puts it wide because of the pressure Carolina puts on. So then what you see is Sebastian Ajo saving a goal because he sticks with his guy. How many number one centermen would have let this guy go? So many of them. And we back up the play because we are so focused on the puck carrier. Remember I said we're puck watching all the time, right? The puck carrier's here. We got to go ahead and watch Ajo. Look, he doesn't get caught looking at the puck carrier. He sticks with his man the entire way. This is what we mean by team defense. Look, he's got a stick on him. He's not just skating away. He's not cross-checking. He's got a stick on him. Then when he reaches in, again, he's not hitting a cross-check. He's looking for a stick lift. Could there be a little bit better execution? For sure, but still really nice job by the number one centerman. And because of that stick lift, he's able to carry him to the corner. Now, what do we see again? Another two on one Carolina outnumbering them again. And bye bye. Perfect puck support. Good defense leads to good offense. And there was about four or five times here where Ajo was always on the right side of the puck, always in right position. And he gets to leave the zone now. Never got panicked. They bail Ranta out. And this is what we saw all game. Now, we went to a whiteboard. We talked about a little bit little bit details. We always break down goals on this channel. Players tune out. If you've tuned out, that's, that's okay. Players tune out on this all the time. That's why playing defense is so hard. It's such a mental and nuanced game. Little thing, little thing, little thing. It is not a complex game. Playing defense is like losing weight. It's very simple. The concept is easy. Eat less and work out. Not all of us do it, especially me. Playing defense is the same way. Pressure and contain at the right time. Be on the right side of the puck at the right time. Stick lift. Don't cross check. Trust your instincts to stay with your man and in the right position and it'll all work out. But players, they're just so programmed to want to score and be freewheeling that it takes a real dedication to excellence like Rod Brindamore has the Canes going in order to do what they just did in that zone in one shift. And they just did that on repeat. How about this here? Another great chance for the New York Rangers. Take a look. Seal the post. Lay your stick down. That's a fine way to go. Why? Because you see his eyes. When you see his eyes, you don't want to pressure. A lot of players would have chased this. And by chasing this, what would have happened is that puck would have snuck through them to the open man in front of the net here. But by playing this contained game, laying down with your stick and delaying, what he ends up doing is allowing the back checker to come in. How many times have we seen guys not in good skating stance, not going to the house? Look, here's a guy going to the house. 
covering the high slot. That's fine. Here's your third defender making that back check by laying down in front of the net, just like this defender is doing. You are buying time for the back checker to take away time and space. The next thing you'll see is, look, he's going to lift the stick. He misses it. It's a little bit of a hook. This is a dirty play, to be honest. When you go ahead and put your stick in that angle, you're not supposed to be doing that, but it is still more effective than a stick press or a cross check that we've been picking on guys for. So at least if you're not going to stick lift, cheat and cheat well. And that's what Carolina ends up doing. So they walk out. There's no shot on net because everybody crowds the net. And then look what happens. They are looking for sticks. Not puck watching again. Look, stick lifting. He's in the right spot. He's not cross checking. Nobody is cross checking. One player on the right side of the puck, right side of the puck, right side of the puck, going towards the net. Everybody crowding the house, getting into the proper position, and people aren't getting caught by the shiny black object that's behind the net. They end up battling properly. Look, stick lift, stick lift. And now what you end up seeing is the puck go into the corner in Carolina. They see a back. When you see a back, what are you going to do? You're going to pressure, right? See a back pressure. That's good pressure. Nothing wrong with that. And unfortunately, the play kicks out. I wish we could just keep watching it, but we can't. I think you get the point, though. There's a lot of little nuances in this game that we can go ahead and break down. When it comes to this game, there were two obvious highlights that you guys are going to see on every hockey channel anyway. You're going to see the D'Angelo puck that hits off the back of his leg. That would have changed the game. The net was wide open. They get lucky. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. D'Angelo takes a puck off the calf. Unbelievable luck. But hey, what are you going to do? The other thing you're going to see is the shorthanded Brendan Smith goal. What happens on the Brendan Smith goal? We've broken down a lot of power plays and penalty kills here, so I'm not going to take up any more of your time breaking those down. It's really simple. Mika Zibanejad pressures when he shouldn't have pressured. And this is what happens when you put four forwards on the power play. Still beneficial to put four forwards on the power play. I'm not saying to go with four. Five forwards is dumb. Four and one is where you want to go. But forwards always think to go forward. He pressures when he shouldn't have pressured. And he pressures when he sees eyes and chest. When you see eyes and chest, it ends up getting chipped around you. This is just not good defense there. You don't want to go ahead. You don't want to commit yourself to that like you did. Because then odd man rushes occur. And that is the simple difference between guys like Sebastian Ajo and what this team is doing. The Carolina Hurricanes, they didn't do that once. They don't make that mistake very often. They did the last game. The Rangers couldn't capitalize. They didn't today. This was perfect Carolina hockey. I think New York will end up flipping this series, going back to New York. Shesterkin is playing amazing. Antti Ranta is playing amazing. I mean, this is a pretty cool series if you like defensive hockey and you like the mind battles of it. However... We are going to check out Edmonton and Calgary, and I'm expecting a few dingers in that game to make up for this one.